You might think this is another phone review video but it's not. It's an honest ownership review of a phone which runs on a Snapdragon 636 processor, has a large screen, has a 5000 mAh battery which costs just 100 US dollars or 7500 Indian rupees. Hey everyone, Mukul the side. Yes, I'm talking about the Asus Zenfone Max Pro M1 and yep, it has a long name. For the past couple of years, I was quite fascinated with the fact that all the smart cars, especially the Teslas have so much information going on their displays and that includes all the navigation capabilities the display could do. So I mostly ride my motorbike and I was trying to have that kind of a utility on the bike, a device which can satisfy my navigation requirements, but doesn't cost too much but has a good display has a good battery has a decent performance when it comes to running apps like google maps because google map is a heavy battery drainage app and is quite heavy for a lot of processor on a lot of phones you would see that the google map isn't as much fluid as you would find it on flagship phones so you can basically say that i wanted to make my motorbike a smart bike so i've been using this phone as my daily driver quite literally and that means i've been using mostly this phone as my google maps I run the hotspot on my other primary phone which is Note 9 and I switch on the Wi-Fi on the uh, M1 Pro and use it as my uh, Google map navigation device for most of the time. So as you know the phone already falls into a budget category and because of that if someone stoles it right when I am uh, riding a bike because there's a lot of snatching cases in my city it won't affect me much but if someone stole my Note 9 that it would have uh, killed me. And also when I used my Note 9 as my navigation device for the bike, it developed a weird problem and I made a video on it. You can check it out on the cards above or in the description below. Few months back, I bought a Redmi 6A and that device was good, but uh, the Google Maps app uh, lagged like hell on it. So I sold it off and I started looking for other alternatives. And as soon as the Asus Zenfone Max Pro M1 prices dropped, I immediately bought one. I've also posted the link to the Redmi 6A uh, review below if you're looking out for budget phones right now. The general specs of the device comes with a Snapdragon 636 processor, an insane 5000 mAh battery, a huge screen, no notches which I personally love, 3GB of RAM because I bought the cheapest model, 3GB of RAM was more than enough for me and 32GB of internal storage. The device comes with an external SD card support which is great. Do remember throughout this review that the device only costed me around 100 US dollars. The storage can be expanded, there is a 3.5mm jack on the phone. The build quality won't win any awards or anything. The first device which I got had dents on its aluminium back and this device which I am currently using doesn't feel that it has a strong build quality or anything but uh, there's hardly hardly any room for complaining or anything if when the device is so cheap charging the complete battery took two and a half hours or something because uh, even when it is charging at 10 watts the insane 5000 mAh uh, needs its own time to get charged I think so when the phone launched it was around 150 or 170 US dollars here in India and even at that price it was a big hit because at that time a phone which had all these features on it uh, was still a bargain and after so much price cutting and discounts i think the snapdragon 636 is still an extremely good processor if you're out there to look for a budget phones and not many phones offer that and i'm not sure why still this processor has a lot of juice left in it and because of the snapdragon 636 processor i never felt any lags on the phone no matter what app i threw on it telegram whatsapp google maps google maps is the biggest battery drainer and i don't personally game on my phones but i have checked on a lot of reviews that you can even play games like pubg on medium settings and even with some tweaks you can maintain the high settings on it on this phone so that itself screams a lot uh, how good this processor is. The camera quality is quite standard but uh, again I cannot complain for the price. The rear camera has actually two lenses which comes with a standard 13 megapixel lens and a depth sensor on it mind the price again. The front camera also performed quite decently for the price. What surprised me that this phone can take 4k videos I'm not kidding. The quality won't match your other mid tier phones or your flagship phones but having a 4k video feature on the phone is a big plus. The night shots also also perform fairly well. I, have, I haven't personally put Gcam on it but I have seen results and I have read this article uh, through which you can easily put your Gcam app on the phone and surprisingly the results are way better than the st stock camera as it is the case with other phones. The phone feels like almost stock Android and there are no rubbish craps, no bloatware on the phone. The call quality also feels decent. 
The speakers on the phones are decently loud. I mean, they're not bad or anything. What I was personally impressed was that how many people have actually bought this and reviewed this phone on Flipkart. And as you can see, the ratings look super awesome. When you see a phone with 100,000 reviews and most of them are positive, uh, most of the consumers won't have to put much brain in just simply buying the phone and getting the phone as even as their primary phones. So as we have been observing, uh, all these flagship models, they're not fetching more and more sales. Year after year, their track record drops as to how many phones they have sold in that year or, an, or in that quarter. So this is, this is what the world has become. More and more budget phones are getting more and more sales because now budget phones are getting extremely good, especially around the 200 US dollar mark or 10,000, 15,000 rupees mark. So a lot of people are preferring to put their money in these phones and run them for an year or so and just sell them off and get a new phone. Companies like Redmi, etc. are the proof that the market in this pride segment is huge and especially in a lot of developing countries these phones are mostly a hit because of their price to performance ratio as i've already bragged enough about this phone there's nothing actually which goes wrong with this phone for the price except for the camera and the display the phone sticks everything right the performance on the phone is great the battery is great the screen is huge and is a full hd screen there's a 3.5 m jack the almost stock android experience feels so fluid and smooth with the processor it comes with you can run all the high-end games on this phone it is a not notchless design if you hate it notches like me there's a dual frigging camera on the rear in this price segment the phone can record 4k videos the sound of the speakers is decently loud there's a fingerprint scanner on the back you get one year of warranty from asus if your country supports that the phone is still getting regular updates on it M uh, many m1 pro users have upgraded their phones to pi and i'm still running oreo but good to see asus is still working on this super budget super cheap phone even after almost one year of its launch because of the 5000 image battery and a clean OS on the phone. The standby time of the phone is insanely great. I remember once I almost got 20 days of standby time with this phone. I just want to mention that at that time, the Wi-Fi was switched on and off repeatedly and there was no SIM in the phone, but still, uh, that's an insane battery backup. I remember once I drove for eight hours straight and the battery dropped to 10%. So eight hours of straight up screen on time with Google Maps running a uh, nonstop is a crazy amount of battery backup you can expect from any phone out there right now. So I think you get the point. The phone is no brainer for its price. Even its next iteration, the Zenfone Max Pro M2 is a, is a great deal right now for all the features and design it offers. The latest flagship from ASUS is a proof that ASUS is keeping us consumer in their mind. And they're not increasing the prices on their flagships every year like every other manufacturer out there which is great i truly respect this and i truly appreciate asus for doing this because there are a lot of consumers like me out there who do not prefer to throw all their money immediately on a phone when, it, when it's launched especially the flagship phones uh, uh, seeing their prices i always wait to get some deals on them or get good price drops within the first couple of months. So ASUS definitely knows what it's doing. If a company is able to compete with Redmi right now, so definitely the company has greater plans to survive in the market. Do let me know what you think of this phone and do subscribe to the channel if the video was helpful to you in any way. That helps me a lot in growing my channel and seeing a bright future. That's all for today. Mubot out.